welcome to the knowledge and data course the next video lecture uh, this one is on knowledge information and data what is knowledge information and data data are individual facts that are out of context have no meaning and are difficult to understand they are often referred to as raw data information is a set of data in context with relevance to one or more people at a point in time or for a period of time Knowledge is the fact of condition of knowing something with familiarity gained through experience or associations. Knowledge is information that has been retained with an understanding about the significance of that information. And knowledge can be either tacit or explicit. Where tacit knowledge is also known as implicit knowledge is the knowledge that a person retains in their mind. While explicit knowledge, also known as formal knowledge, is knowledge that has been formally codified and stored. So reading out the definition is something you can probably also do without me. So I try to, understand, to, to help you understand what these notions really mean. So data is really the facts on an on a, on a almost signal level. Information is interpreted data, which is relevant for people so that they can act, for example, upon it. And knowledge is the fact that, that you know something through experience, association, familiarity, that goes beyond the simple information, heaven and information. So it is information that has been retained with the understandings about the significance of this information. So why is information important and what can I do with this? The next distinction between the tacit and the explicit is very important because the implicit one is one that is very difficult to use if you want to automate processes. Why the explicit one is the one that we are going to use in this course, particular for data sharing and the purposes that we really want to use data in an information systems context. So here is a motivating example, and this is data. It is scientific data, I can tell you. It is data that um, comes from the biology domain and which describes the state of trees in changing global uh, uh, climate crisis. Obviously, I know this because I've looked for the data and I've put it on the website, but from the data itself, it is impossible to derive what it means, even if you understand the codes on top, in the top row. But normally, if you only see raw data, it is useless. It has no value. Here is the description that you get. It's from an initial census uh, for a large forest uh, a, a plot to, um, to understand the dynamics of the tree development depending on the climate change. And this is data from the first five years of the establishment of the Smithsonian Conservation Biology Institute and so forth. This gives some context. And at the moment when you have the context, where you, for example, read that the initial plot census enumerates 38,000 freestanding stands and individual trees comparing of, uh, com uh, comprising of 62 species, you start making some sense of the data. So you see, knowledge is important so that you can make sense of data. In that sense, you turn your data, given the context of where the data comes from, into information that can be useful. So this is a slightly different example. It's, it's also from the scientific uh, domain of, uh, of, of trees. And here we have already some abstraction over the data. So uh, they also collected tree information. They went into the woods and they counted at every spot somewhere in Alaska. They counted how many trees were in what state. And if you now look at this data table, which is already uh, contains a lot of information from a, from a, from a purely data perspective, then you see that it's still very difficult to make sense of it. It contains a lot of knowledge, but it's very implicit knowledge. So what a Sitka spruce is or a shore pine, probably it's trees, but what the difference is between Western hemlocks and Western and mountain hemlocks and why, whether they can be the th same thing or not, I don't know. The experts, of course, they know this. So for them, this, is, this data is meaningful information. It becomes a little bit more meaningful if we also look at the place where the data comes from. 
So this is uh, uh, the vegetation changes in a temperate forest impacted by climate change. And now I also gave you the headers, the, the, the uh, attributes. So the left hand part of the, the, the column, uh, the, the, the left hand column goes about species. We gathered that more or less. Um, the second part g g goes about areas and the relation between dead and alive plants. And the, the, the right hand side, so the right six columns go about the den density of stems. And this is information that as soon as the, the scientists about climate change have this information, the data becomes even more meaningful. So we can do something with data once we understand what it means and once we have the knowledge to make something with it. Okay, I want to give you a different perspective on data and what data can also be. So for this, I need to open an application, which you will hopefully see now. Uh, and you will now be able to listen to something. I hope you can hear this. And I will continue with the, the presentation. So this is a even more context. You see the picture where it's taken in Alaska. You see the kind of trees and you also see that there are dead trees in between. And this is the, the purpose of this, of this uh, research that these scientists did. Can we understand the impact of climate change on the forests in Alaska? More data. The, the data was collected using more information and more knowledge that these, these people had by, for example, choosing the right plots in Alaska to make meaningful statements and to make the data even more meaningful. So this is all the context for the data, for the context to be valuable for these scientists. So that in the end, they can turn the data that they collected into some useful information that they have, for example, as advice for policymakers. And I don't want to claim that I understand anything of this uh, particular uh, information sheet, but this is uh, describes the uh, regeneration of different mortality types. And this is something which uh, um, in which the scientists can summarize the knowledge that they have gained from their research. You will ask yourself why in the background I gave you this music and this music is a, a different representation of the data. So basically it's a sonification of data and it gives you an indication of uh, the number of trees getting more sparse and it's a metaphor, it's a knowledge way of representing the knowledge and the information that some of the trees are dying out. So what you hear in this sort of dying music is one way of representing the knowledge in this data or the information in this data that the climate change has the effect of, uh, of, of uh, uh, killing off uh, species of trees. So most of the work of a data scientist is now to clean and organize data before it can be interpreted in any way. So producing the data is the one thing. So these guys, they want to Alaska to the field trips and uh, put cameras on the floor, made photos and measured all the trees. But then they had to describe the trees. They had to map the trees to other collections, to other images that they took somewhere. And if uh, you ask other data scientists where they spend most of the time doing, then you will find out that the, the cool issues of data mining for patents, for example, the learning where you, you, you identify models and uh, patterns in data only takes about 10% of the time. And most of the time sits in cleaning and organizing data. So whenever you have data sets, multiple data sets, this problem even gets bigger. And in the same Forbes survey, data scientists also stated that this was the part of the work that they enjoyed the least, as you can imagine. So what this example hopefully also showed you is that you need enormous amounts of knowledge to make data useful, to turn data into information that can be used for scientific purposes or for policy making and so forth. So the work of a data scientist really involves enormous amount of knowledge 
And the more of this knowledge is implicit in his head or in the head of other people, the more difficult it is to combine this knowledge and this data and get some useful information out of it. So the explicit knowledge is, is one that is tangible, visible, public, and then be, can be accessed by other people. And once it's shared, it belongs to everyone. So in, if you think of this iceberg metaphor, then it's above the water. And normally in any data science application, the tacit knowledge is the huge, 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 the uh, more present knowledge. So the data, the information about the data that's in the heads of the data collector, of the data manager, and so forth. And it's all hidden, and it's all only useful for the person who has this tacit knowledge. And this is a big problem. This tacit knowledge is sort of the, the bigger part of the problem, but even if you have made the knowledge explicit and shareable, your problem isn't solved. So this is the form of knowledge that describes our data about the trees in Alaska. Nested circular plots were used to sample trees and saplings as follows. A fixed radius for the plot, a diameter, and then we counted live saplings. Uh, you try to read it and you try to understand what they did. This is already extremely difficult. And if you want to reproduce this, if you want to combine this with other data sources, you are in big trouble. So the second problem is that the data, even though the, the, the knowledge, excuse me, even if the knowledge is explicitly available and not tacit at all, it's still very difficult to use it because the knowledge is not formalized and not shareable and not accessible by algorithms. So let's get again to this definition. Data were the facts. Look at these numbers. If you do not have any background information about the data, if you do not know the schema, if you only see the raw data, it's completely, completely useless. So if you have knowledge about the data, if you know the schema, the relation between the attributes, or even more background information that these data sources are about trees in Alaska, then this knowledge is useful to turn this data into some information that you can convey to other people. And these, this way of conveying this information to other people can be very different. The one time it can be music, it can be for policymakers, nice graphics and so forth. The how to turn information into something that we can share among people is a completely different question. But first we need to be able to make sense of data and we do this through explicit knowledge, namely knowledge that we model in a formal way so that a computer can store it, reuse it, and interpret it. And this is the role of knowledge or semantics with data. It's sometimes uh, represented in this way that you have the uh, pyramid of information, data and knowledge, where the data is the foundation, facts and the figures, with, which relay something specific, very, very detailed, very often, and not organized in any way. It's not entirely true because I also showed you some aggregated data, which is already organized, but th that's the general idea. So it's the, the signals that come in individual bits. And as soon as this gets some context, some categories, some calculations, some condensed, based on knowledge, then you get information. And from this information, when you really contextualize this and get insights about the domain that you want to talk about, you extract new knowledge. So this is the, one of the problems of the use of the term knowledge, because in a way we use it in two different ways. We want to use data to get some information that we can then tur turn into interesting knowledge about the domain of interest. But there is a second view of, of this, sorry, wrong direction. This is namely that knowledge can be help, can very helpful to interpret data so that the data becomes information. So in a way we have a, not the pyramid where you start from knowledge, build information and then come up to the knowledge as the end product from bottom to top. But in a way we have a circle where we have data, where we have some information about the data, we derive some knowledge with experts, maybe from the data, maybe without the data. 
And this knowledge helps us again to extract new information about the data. So partially this is an, an automated process, and then we look at the machine learning side of life. Partially this is really a knowledge engineering side, where we build knowledge, explicit knowledge representations of the domains and of the data. And this is what this course is all about, how we can easily combine this knowledge that we somehow gather about the data and from the data with the data so that it becomes useful for re reuse not only the data but also the knowledge and that we can therefore in a far more easy and effective way produce valuable information that has an impact. It's not only the knowledge that we need in order to interpret the data but it's really is formal knowledge that we need because there is now so much data around that it becomes almost impossible to do uh, data integration, to work with data that you haven't collected yourself unless you have formalized knowledge about it. And then we can use machine, machine methods for turning data into information. And this is what this course is about.